we will compare three bags today. The Trendy CC, the Coco Handle, and the Kelly. In today's video, we will go over all the details, do pros and cons, and talk usability. Then we'll do what fits in my bag, what bag that I cannot live without, and would I buy more of these bags? And I'll put some mod shots somewhere in this video. I hope this will help you decide for yourself if you want to add any of these to your collection. Before we get started, remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment and share. So let's start with a quick recap of what sizes I have here. The Trendy CC comes in three sizes. It comes in the small, the medium, and the large. The small is easy to identify because it has five full quilts across. The medium and the large, they both have six full quilts across. But you can see here that the medium is way more rectangular than the large. And what I noticed recently is that it looks like the large got discontinued. Because if you go to the website today, the large has the same dimensions as the medium. So now the medium has become the new large. And the one that I have is the small size, and it's 9.8 inches across. And here you can see the size comparison. For now, the small is the only size that I'm interested in. The other sizes don't look good on me, so yeah, I'm very happy about this. So next, let's talk about the cocoa handle sizes. As of today, it comes in four sizes. So it comes in the mini, the small, the medium, and the large. The mini has five full quilts across. The small has six, the medium has seven, and the large has eight. So that's pretty handy to know. The cocoa handle is a trapezoid shape. So that means that the top length and the bottom length are different. So when I measured this, the top length is at 9.5 inches and the bottom length is at 11.4 inches. So you actually lose about two inches. And for the small size, or according to my research, the top length is about an inch less. So it's about 8.4 inches and the bottom is 9.4 inches. And for the mini, it's the same case. So the top length is 6.5 inches and the bottom is 7.5 inches, but don't quote me on that. And the reason why that's important to me is, although the length is at 11.4 inches, because the top length is at 9.5 inches, to me, this actually feels like a bag that is 9.5 inches wide. This bag is 9.8 inches wide, and to me, this feels more like a bag that is 9.5 inches wide, so that is why I chose to compare these two. One thing to note here is that for some reason, on the pre-love market, the size descriptions are different. They list the mini as an extra mini, and a small as a mini, and a medium as a small, and a large as the medium. So when I bought this pre-loved, this was actually listed as a small. When I was shopping, I was actually looking at the length. So yeah, the pre-love sometimes will mark this as a small and sometimes as a medium. So if you're looking for this one, look for one that's 11.4 inches long. Next, let's talk about the Chanel Kelly sizes. So there's the jumbo, and that bag is way too big for my proportions. It doesn't look good on me at all. So I'm only interested in the small size. And the small size I have is 10 inches wide. For some reason, there's a lot more jumbos out there in the market then the Kelly's small, so the small is really hard to get. And there's two other bags that some sellers list as Kelly's, but they actually look more like a cocoa handle. And the Kelly has no strap, and the cocoa handle has a strap. So these Kelly's come in two sizes, which is 11.6 and also 10 inches. But they are way more rectangular than the traditional Kelly's. All right, so it's time for the three-way comparison. So let's go over some details. The Trendy CC has three compartments. One back here, which I don't use. The middle one, which is the biggest one, and that's the one that I do use. And then a smaller one up here. The Coco Handle has two compartments. One back here, and a bigger one up here. And there's a divider that's zippered, and I found this actually pretty useful. So. I would definitely use both compartments. The Vintage Kelly has one compartment and I actually prefer this. This way, 
I could use the space any way I want. So this bag has a handle drop, which is distance between here and here, of 3.5 inches. The handle drop on this one is 3 inches. And lastly, the handle drop on this one is 2.5 inches. This beauty has a strap. And because this is one of the newer models, the strap is not detachable. And I wish it was. Because when it's retracted, it takes up some room. And I already don't use the smaller compartment back here, so I really want this extra room. I would prefer that I can detach this. The Kogel handle has straps, and so the best part is that they're detachable. But I also heard from other people that this part here can break off, so most people just leave it on. I wanted to actually show you guys how to detach this, but this is jammed and I can't move it, so I don't want to force it because I don't want to break this, so. For that reason, this bag is going back. But it's supposed to detach. And the Kelly doesn't come with a strap. So that may be a deal breaker for some people, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I did see some sellers add a detachable strap to this. Personally, I wouldn't do that. I personally think that will devalue your bag because you've altered the bag. If you see this for sale with a strap, that's not original. So next, let's talk about the weight. The Trendy weighed in at 2 pounds. The Coco Handle, which is in caviar, came in at 1.6 pounds. And the Vintage Kelly, you might be surprised, came in at 1 pound. So yeah, in this case, the leather bag is much heavier than the two caviar bags. Alright, so let's do a what fits in my bag. Let's start with the Vintage Kelly. I have six essential items, and anything more than that is extra. I've got the iPhone Pro Max, and you can actually stand it up like this, and the bag will still close. So, that's a huge plus. These are sunglasses. For inexpensive sunglasses, I'm okay putting them in a soft pouch, and it fits right up at the top. Hard wallet. Key case so I don't scratch the inside of my bag. For cash and coin. For me, a sunblock isn't essential. And a lipstick. So those are my six essentials. Chanel Twist Perfume, Chanel Powder, Chanel Eyeshadow, and Chanel Compact Powder. That means I fit 11 items, so six are essential and five are extra. That's actually pretty good. This is the back pocket and of the three, this is my favorite back pocket. So, let's see how much fits in this bag. This is the iPhone Pro Max, and this size only fits horizontal. If you put it this way, the bag won't close. This phone is one size down, so it's the iPhone Pro. This won't close either. The next size is the iPhone mini. And yeah, this fits standing. This bag will close. So those were the essentials. This bag fit two extra items, so that brings the count to eight. I know I could have packed more, but for me personally, I don't like to overstuff my bags. But the important point is, when I had those 8 items, it was very difficult to pull the strap up and retract. So for me, even though I could add 8 items, I would probably only carry my essentials. Let's see what fits inside this cocoa handle. Sunglasses, sunblock, keys. Cash and Coins, Wallet, iPhone Pro Max, Chanel Perfume. This is a pouch that Chanel gives you when you buy their cosmetics. Inside the Chanel pouch, I have some knickknacks, like lip gloss, 
eyebrow pencil, and a few other things. And in the second compartment, I put the rest of my makeup stuff. Powder, compact foundation, eyeshadow. And here, I have some Chanel Sample Mascara. So, as expected, the Coco handle fits the most. And this is what the back pocket looks like. One more important thing is, this bag is pre-loved. And from the side, you can tell that the bag is leaning to the front. And this couch isn't fully flat, so... So, as I'm showing you the back pocket, I realized... It falls to the front. When you're buying this pre-loved, try to select a bag that is not leaning to the front. And currently, this bag is empty, so maybe if it's full, it won't do this. So now this bag is full, I'm going to let it go, and we're going to see if it tilts to the front. You ready? All right. The bag actually fell harder and faster. So yeah, I would stay away from a bag that leans to the front. So both Coco Handle and the Trendy CC can be worn four ways. The Kelly is mostly worn as a top handle bag. I have tiny wrists, so I can put it on the crook of my arm, but it's not easy. Let's talk usability. For this Kelly, the pro is that it's light in weight, and I appreciate the single compartment. The con is that this doesn't come with a strap and I won't be putting an aftermarket strap on this, so I'm okay with this just being a top handle bag. I am actually training, you heard it right, training to use a top handle bag. I'm mostly a cross body bag person, and right now, this bag is like a two hour bag, similar to like two hour heels. If I cannot adapt to using just a top handle only bag like this, then there is no reason for me to pursue the Hermes Birkin. I don't want to finally get the Bergen to realize, hey, it's a two-hour bag. So similar to an athlete training for the marathon, I am training for the Bergen. Sounds totally sane, right? I'm so glad that you agree. So next, let's talk about the trendy usability. We will start with a con. The leather scratches easily. I mean like super easy. So on the inside, the CC is stitched. Those stitches leave imprints on the leather. Can you see that here? So, when I'm not using this bag and it's sitting on my shelf, I actually don't close the flap. I leave it open like this. Just to show you guys, I close the flap and I turn the lock overnight. And for me, if I keep it open like this, those indents do go away, but it takes some time. Because this lambskin is so scratch prone, I don't leave the chain out like this. For me, I don't feel comfortable having the chain out either in the front like this or even in the back because that can leave imprints in the lambskin. And depending how bad it is, the imprint may or may not go away. For me, I only have the chain out if I'm using it as a shoulder bag. And if I'm using it as a top handle bag, then I have it retracted like this. Which leads me to con number two. The strap is no longer detachable, and this is a big issue for me because when I use this bag as a top handle and the straps are retracted like this, it takes up a lot of room. So there are two options. Option number one, I can put the strap then put all my stuff on top of the strap. 
This makes finding and taking my stuff out easier, but when I pack the compartment full, it's a challenge to pull the strap out. And it's almost impossible to retract the strap. So instead, I need to pull the chain from the inside. And yeah, that's pretty annoying. Option two, I can fill up the bag and put the strap on top of my stuff. This makes it easier to pull up the strap, but it makes finding and taking things out much harder. And it's still almost impossible to retract the strap. So I still need to pull the chain from the inside. So yeah, both options are pretty annoying to me. The older trendy CCs, some of them have the detachable strap, which would be an awesome option for me right now. But the older models didn't come with the rose gold hardware. I will admit, I was completely blinded by the rose gold hardware. Because I need to retract the chain to the inside of the bag, I only put like four small items inside this bag, and I don't fill out the big compartment. One, two, three, four. Let's do the pull, then retract test. So this bag is more for looks and not much for function, you know, to carry stuff around, at least for me. That reminds me of my dog. Let me introduce you to my bull terrier, Lady Mignon. And I know she's not deaf because she understands the word treat, but when I get home, there's no dog at the door. I get home and I walk around for like five minutes. Then she wakes up and gives me the, oh, when did you come home look? Yup, she fails as a guard dog, but she's completely adorable. So yeah, the trendy is kind of like that. And what's the point of having pets when you can't gender bend during Halloween? This is Lady Mignon wearing a bow and a tie. And yes, she's a girl. Now back to the bag. If you're totally fine with leaving the chain out, then pulling the chain in and out of the bag is probably not a concern for you. But this is a huge con for me. For the pro, the trendy is the easiest to style. This goes with every outfit in my wardrobe. And this bag makes me feel butterflies every time I see it. So that is the biggest pro. Let's talk usability for the cocoa handle. Let's start with the pros. For the way I use these three bags, the cocoa handle fits the most. And I see this as an everyday bag that I can use for eight hours, no issues. And this has feet. If having feet is a must, then this is the only bag that has it. I plan to wear this bag mostly as a top handle bag and occasionally as a shoulder bag, similar to the trendy CC. So that leads us to the con. The handle has large exposed stitches. And I can definitely feel the large stitches when I'm holding the bag. Also, I can feel it when it's on the crook of my arm. So I do find this a bit uncomfortable. So yeah, this is a concern for me. Let's look at the Kelly handle. I can see stitches up here, but if you look under the handle, this is actually smooth. So for me, when I'm holding this bag or have it on the crook of my arm, so I personally don't notice it or feel it. I do understand that this handle drop may not be big enough for some people, but for me, I find this handle comfortable. Looking at the trendy, the handle is the most comfortable and it's malleable. The good thing about malleable is that it's not structured, so it bends and molds your hand. The bad thing is that it's malleable. So I've seen some pre-love trendies and the handle got deformed. Last year, I did buy a pre-love trendy and the handle was so deformed from either use or careless shipping that it was impossible to get it to look normal like this. So you can decide for yourself if the malleable handle is a pro or a con for you. Back to the cocoa handle. So the last con is, 
if you end up with a pre-loved bag that leans to the front, then it can fall over. All right, let's talk about what bag I cannot live without. So from the three, the bag that I cannot live without is, can you guess? It's the Trendy CC. It fits the least, scratches easily, but what can I say? She's too beautiful to not be in my collection. Next, I would pick the Kelly. Can't do crossbody or shoulder. Yep, it's not rational, but no other Chanel bag can deliver me this silhouette. If I had to live without a bag, it would be the most practical of them all, the Coco Handle. Yup, totally illogical. Hilarious, I agree. The last question I'm gonna answer is, do I wanna add any more of these bags to my collection? If I didn't have this trendy with the rose gold hardware, then I would get the black with the yellow gold. You know, the one with the detachable strap. One trendy in the lambskin is good enough for me. I do have the denim one on the wish list, but that is very difficult to find in excellent condition. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to add that, but yep, I'm still looking for that. I would love to add more Kelly, like in pink, maybe camel, in caviar only, but to find these in excellent condition with no quarter wear, I haven't seen them yet. So I'm not holding my breath and I don't know if I'll ever be able to find them, but I will keep trying. I can definitely see myself adding the cocoa handle in the size medium only, but I'm not in a rush. I'm only interested in the caviar, and because I'll be using this mostly as a top handle, I do want the handle to be comfortable. So let's quickly go over all the variations. The cocoa handle is offered in many materials. We have the tweed and sequin, we've got the discontinued python, and you may like the shearling. Of course, there's the denim, and the velvet, and then you've got the usual suspects. Lambskin, goatskin, caviar, metallic caviar, and iridescent caviar. So next, let's talk about the handle variations. The special thing about the cocoa handle is some of these bags come with very decorative handles. So here we have the lizard, and this bag is from 2018, and then we have the lizard embossed, and I believe that is actually not lizard. And this bag came out in 2019, and that is because Chanel discontinued exotics like Lizard, Python, and some other skins in May of 2019. So if you're looking for Lizard or any exotic bags, you would have to get that from the pre-loved market. And this beauty has the snakeskin handle, and it's gorgeous. The handle can be a different color than the rest of the bag. The handle is covered with a gold logo, and it's all metal. This handle is absolutely gorgeous. But for someone like me who wants to use this as a top handle mostly, this actually looks painful. <laughs> then the handle comes beaded and I agree this is also gorgeous but equally as uncomfortable. But if you are planning on using this bag mostly as a shoulder bag then this is probably not an issue for you. So yeah, I think these bags are absolutely gorgeous. Then we see a studded handle and this bag is made out of tweed. I also found this in the metal braided version. And for me, this looks very cage-like and gladiator. So yeah, if this is up your alley, then go for that one. If you're looking for something more playful, then we've got the rainbow handle. And of course, the iridescent handle. So lastly, let's talk about the hardware choices. This velvet bag comes with the Diamante hardware. So you've got some sparkles there. And if that's not extra, you've got the iridescent ombre. It comes in aged gold, then the shiny light gold, brush gold, silver, antique silver, and there's gunmetal, and incognito, which I call monochrome, where the hardware is the same color as the bag. And of course we have the so black, which means the hardware is black and the bag is also black. So what do you think? Would you add any of these bags to your collection? Leave me a comment. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. And I hope I will sound better next time.